I told you that tonight a criminal mastermind is going to break into your house? Your entire house will be completely rearranged and what used to be your kitchen will now be a nursery for the culprit and her family. She and her children will be cleaning out your fridge, bathing in your water and using your electricity. The criminal is none other than a cinepid, a female gall wasp, and your house, the victim, is an oak tree. All around us, female gall wasps have infiltrated the leaves of these unsuspecting plants, converting their tissue into the perfect home for their larvae to grow. These structures are called galls, and they might just be one of the most fascinating insect plant interactions in the entire animal world. You can find galls just about everywhere, on the leaves, the branches, the roots, or even the flowers of a tree. Every gall has three essential parts. Each of these act as an additional layer of protection for the growing baby insect. First, the kernel. This is the innermost chamber of the gall, where the larvae will grow. Surrounding the kernel is what's called the nutritive tissue. This is a spongy, expansive layer that can be up to inches thick in some galls. It acts as a buffer against any predators. When the gall is just beginning to form, the nutritive tissue is very high in sugar content, actually serving a second purpose of providing food for the larvae inside. However, as the gall ages, that sugar is replaced with lignin, the hard organic polymer that makes up wood. Because of this high concentration of lignin, the gall becomes tougher, and it makes it even harder for predators to slice their way through. The last line of defense for the gall is its outermost layer, a hard crust made of noxious chemicals that will turn most predators away at the door. Galls can be either monothalamus, meaning that they have one big chamber, or multithalamus, which means they have a bunch of chambers within. It all begins with the female wasp. She's looking for somewhere that's inconspicuous, so the gall won't be found and preyed upon. Once she finds the leaf she's looking for, the female wasp gets comfortable and uses her ovipositor, that's the long stinger on her backside, to inject this sort of hormonal cocktail into the tree's cell tissue. Scientists still don't know exactly what's in the saliva stew, but it's likely a combination of ovipositol fluid, that's her eggs, and even some venom. The mother and her larvae have already reprogrammed the plant's vascular system to deliver these nutrients and growth hormones straight to the gall's interior. But as Rachel Carson once wrote, in nature, nothing exists alone. So how do galls interact with their environment? Believe it or not, galls are even allies to species like ants, spiders, moths, and beetles. They attract and feed these organisms by producing honeydew. Once the ants and spiders have arrived, they fend off other predators that may try to parasitize the gall, protecting not only the gall, but the tree from predators. Galls are both parasitic and mutualistic with the trees and these other organisms. So the next time you take a walk under an oak tree, take a closer look. If you're lucky, you might find one of these tiny wonders hanging from a leaf.